Okay, guys, welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to use trigonom tri uh, sorry, we're going to talk about how to use trigonometry in right triangles. So what I want to be able to do is, given any right triangle, we'll talk about how to compute the three basic trig functions, cosine, sine, and tangent. Um, for any angle in a right triangle, if you're given the lengths of any two sides of that triangle, we'll also talk about how to find the lengths of all three sides if you're given any angle uh, in addition to the uh, right angle, um, and also if you're given any side, okay? So just as a reminder, right, there are several ways that we can think of a right triangle. Right, so if we have something that's sitting in the unit circle, right, we know that our sine is like our y value and our cosine is like our x value, right? But we can also just consider these as lengths of a triangle, right? And we can call the length of the height b, and we can call the length of the height a, or sorry, the width a, right? So we can sort of classify this in terms of trigonometry, right? Now, if we sort of extend this further and we sort of refresh a little bit of uh, geometry that you probably learned at some point, um, we can talk about how we can relate the opposite side, adjacent side, and the hypotenuse of a triangle uh, to the three trig functions, right? So if I'm looking at an angle, right, in this triangle here, we're just putting the angle here. I could have put it up here if I wanted to as well, uh, but we'll assume that the angle is here for now. Well, if I look in the opposite direction of the angle, that's the opposite side, right? And again, this is also sort of like my Y value, right? If I look at the side that's right next to it, that's what we call the adjacent side. And again, this is like your X value. And of course, across from the right angle, right? There's a right angle here. Across from the right angle is where you have your hypotenuse, right? Now, to word this in terms of our trig functions here, we know that the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, right? So it's like your Y value over your hypotenuse. We know that the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent is the slope of this, which you can think of as y over x, right? And you can also check that if you were to do sine over cosine, the hypotenuse would cancel out and you would get opposite over adjacent, right? Now, there are a bunch of ways that uh, students use to remember this. The, probably the most common is sort of like this little acronym, SOKATOA. For some reason, that's sort of like a, a quick little phrase that sticks in our head. Um, and sort of the idea here is that if you put the trig functions in here, sine, cosine, and tangent, then your O is just your opposite side and your H is your hypotenuse. Your A is your adjacent side and H is again your hypotenuse. And then here you have opposite and adjacent. Right, so that's sort of a little acronym that we can use to help us remember which sort of setup do we need for each trig function. Okay, so let's take a look at an example where we want to come up with the length of the hypotenuse and also evaluate each of the three trig functions here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is find the hypotenuse. Okay, now here we're given two of the lengths, right? So how can we get the third length? Well, recall that at some point, if you have a right triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, as long as c is your hypotenuse, right? And this of course is the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so with this in mind, if I call my hypotenuse C in this case, I can say that three squared plus two squared is equal to C squared. Well, this would give me nine plus four is equal to C squared. 
So I'm going to get that c is equal to the square root of 13. Now, whenever we're dealing with these right triangles, we're always going to take our positive square root because we're talking about a length. We don't want to have negative lengths here. All right? So we have that this length now is square root of 13. Okay, so that's sort of the first step here. Now, if my angle is up here, that's where I want to base everything off of, right? So if I look directly opposite from that angle, I'm going to see that three is my opposite side. If I look directly next to this, I'm going to see that two is my adjacent side, right? And of course, across from the right angle, is where I have my hypotenuse, all right? So let me come down here, give myself a little bit more room. We know that the opposite side is three, adjacent was two, and my hypotenuse was square root of 13. So from these three quantities, we can find the sine of this angle, we can find the cosine of this angle, we can find the tangent. Right, and by SOHCAHTOA, S is OH, right? So we get opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So now we just need to fill these in. Opposite is three, hypotenuse is square root of 13. And once we rationalize, we're gonna get that the sine is three squared of 13 over 13. The cosine is adjacent, which is two over squared of 13. And once we rationalize, we'll get two squared of 13 over 13. And finally, the tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is just three over two. We don't need to do any rationalizing there. So we get that the tangent is three over two for this one. All right, so we found the hypotenuse and we found the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle for this triangle. Okay, now let's do something a little bit different. Now in this example, we wanna find the lengths of the other two sides, okay? So I wanna call this, for example, C, and we'll call this A, just to sort of keep these set up consistent here. All right, now the problem is we can't use Pythagorean theorem here because for that we would need at least two of the sides. So we're a little bit stuck here, at least for now. All right, now one thing that you can do is you can fill in the rest of these angles here, right? We know that that's the right angle because we're looking at right triangles. And if this is 90 and this is 28, we know that everything has to add to 180, so we can say that that is 62 degrees. All right, so we can at least find all the angles on the inside, but we can actually find the sides as well, all right? So how can we find the sides? Well, let's worry about A for a second. So first, we'll find A. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at one of our angles. Now, since we, we're able to find that the other angle is 62. I could just as easily use that one as well. But since 28 was given, we'll use 28. Now, the one that I'm given is the opposite side. So for 28 degrees, we know that the opposite is four. Now, if I want to find A, A is the adjacent side. So we want to think about, well, which trig function is going to use both opposite and adjacent? Of course, we would need tangent for that. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And in this case, my theta, my angle is 28 degrees. My opposite side is four. And then the thing that I want, the adjacent side is A. Well, now this is an equation we can solve for A, right? If I multiply both sides by A and divide by tangent, I'm gonna get that A is whatever four divided by tangent of 28, whatever that is, all right? Now, we haven't talked about how to 
enter this in the calculator, right? Because 28 degrees isn't a nice, easy angle that we know, right? But what we can do is we can do this in the calculator. I just need to do four divided by tangent of 28. Now, when you're entering this in the calculator, we need to make sure that we're in degrees, right? Make sure if, if we're using 28 degrees, we wanna make sure we are in degree mode. Now on most calculators, the way that you can do this is that there should be a mode button and you would click that and just make sure that you are in uh, degrees here. Now I'm using an older calculator, so I'm trying to find where my mode button is here. It looks like, so if you're using sort of a scientific calculator, let's see, do I need to go to data? No, not data. Okay, so on my calculator, I just have a button that allows me to switch freely between degrees and radians. So I'm gonna make sure I'm in degrees, and then I can do a four divided by a tangent of 28 degrees, and this is going to give me that A is roughly 7.5229. So we get that this is roughly 7.5229. Well, now at this point, you have two options, all right? So now to get C, just found A, so now we wanna get C. There are two options. We could do something like, now I wanna get the hypotenuse involved, so instead of using opposite and adjacent, we could use opposite, which is four, and the hypotenuse, which is what we wanna solve, and we could say that the tangent of 28 is equal to opposite four over hypotenuse. Um, sorry, not tangent this time. I want to use sine. All right, so we could say sine of 28 is four over C. All right, the other option, which is the one I'm going to use, is now we have two sides. So now we can use Pythagorean theorem. Right, so we can say that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And in this case, my a is 7.5229 squared plus b, which is four squared is equal to c squared. Right, so then c squared is whatever this junk comes out to be in the calculator. So if I do 7.5229 squared and add that to four, squared, I'm gonna get that C squared is 72.594. And if I square root that, 0.594, we'll get that C is roughly about 8.52. Okay, so we can get the other two sides if as long as we're given an angle on one of the other sides. So this was uh, 8.52 roughly. Okay, so that's an example of finding the two sides if you're given one and an angle. Okay, so now we'll do sort of, um, well not sort of, we'll do a word problem that sort of relates to this. So this is pretty frequently, um, something that comes up pretty frequently. So we're gonna say that we're standing 30 feet from the base of a tall building. We aim a laser pointer at the closest part of the top of the building, and you'll measure that the, later, uh, that the laser is pointed five degrees tilted uh, from pointing straight up. All right, so the laser pointer is held six feet above the ground. We wanna know how tall is the building, okay? So if I wanna draw something that sort of corresponds to this, so we have a guy holding a laser pointer. All right, we'll put a red tip on here. And we have a building over here. And we have that this distance is 30 feet. Okay. Now we aim the laser pointer to the closest part of the top building. So we have something like that. Right. Now we're also told, of course, this is not true on the scale. We're told that it's five degrees tilted from pointing straight up. So we have that sort of this is five degrees here. Okay. Now, 
of course, the idea is that we want to incorporate trig here somehow, right? I also know this is six feet, so that's important too. All right, now in order to incorporate trig, I need a right triangle. And of course, the obvious way to make this into a right triangle is to sort of split this across here. And then there's our right triangle. All right, and now the advantage is that we know that this length is 30 because we're standing 30 feet away. And now if this is a 90 degree angle and this is a five degree angle, then this must be 85 degrees, right? Because these two would need to form a right angle as well. So here's what we currently have. We have a right triangle where we know that this is 85 degrees. We could then say this is five degrees. And we know that this bottom length here is 30 feet. And since we want to know how tall the building is, that's my variable here, right? Now also keep in mind that you're six feet off the ground. So if you really want to get the height of the building, we really need to add six to this, okay? So the other option is to find X and then just add the six feet afterwards, but this will sort of get this accomplished in one shot. So now, same sort of setup as before. If I want this particular side, well, that's my opposite side in relation to the 85 degrees. If you use the five degrees, then you would have that as your adjacent side, all right? But my X plus six is my opposite side and my 30 is my adjacent. So which function uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tangent again. So I'd know that tangent of my angle, 85 degrees, is equal to opposite, so x plus six, over adjacent, which is 30. So now if I solve this for x, I would multiply both sides by 30. So we would say that 30 times tangent of 85 degrees is equal to x plus six. So then finally, x is gonna equal 30 times tangent of 85 degrees minus six. Right, so if we do that, so if I do 30 times tangent of 85 and we subtract six, we're gonna get that X is roughly 336.9. All right, so again, that gives me my X value. And then since the height of the building is this added to six, So that would be 336 plus six, so that'd be a 342.9. All right, so your height is 342.9 feet. All right, so the idea behind these word problems is to try and get a right triangle out of it so that you can use trig. Okay, let's do, yeah, so we'll do one more example and that will wrap up this video. Okay, so we're told that a surveyor at point B wishes to measure the distance between points A and B, but a canyon between A and B prevents direct measurement. So what we do is we move 500 meters perpendicular to line AB to the point C, and we measure that angle, all right? So we want to be able to figure out what is the distance between points A and B, all right? So it seems like we have a lot to worry about, but let's parse through this together. So if we're at point B, we want to measure the distance to point A, but there's a canyon, so we can't find, oops. There's a canyon, so we cannot find this directly, so I imagine that's what we're going to be looking for. We're going to call that X. Okay, now we're going to move 500 meters perpendicular to line AB to the point C. All right, so we're going to say that we move perpendicular to this line, and we have point C right here. Okay, so now if we measure this, to be 78 degrees, so this is a 78 degree angle, we wanna be able to um, 
uh, now measure this angle, right? So we measure the angle BCA to be 78 degrees. Now the problem here with the way that I've drawn it is that this is not a right triangle. So we can't use trig right now. All right, so that's a little bit of an issue. So what we then need to do, let's see. So I guess the way that we should do this is maybe I should do my drawing a little bit better. So if we call, yeah, what we can do is we, let's draw this in a way that allows us to do this. So we're gonna say that instead we're moving this way. by 500 meters, all right? And that we measure this angle to be 78 degrees. So in this case, it does matter how we draw it, right? Because you can see that the first way that I drew it resulted in something that wasn't in a right triangle, but if we draw it in this way, we do get something that's a right triangle. Okay, so now it becomes a matter of, I need to find this length x and just using the fact that I have a 78 degree angle and that this side is 500 meters. Well, if I look, what's the relationship of my X side? This is the opposite side. And of course, what's the relationship of this side? This is the adjacent side. Okay, so what trig function involves opposite and adjacent? Well, that's tangent. So we can say that tangent of 78 is equal to opposite, which is X, over adjacent, which is 500. So then to solve for X, I would just multiply both sides by 500. And you get that 500 times tangent of 78 degrees will be my X. So if I take 500, excuse me, multiply by tangent of 78, we get that X is roughly 2,352.32 meters. All right, so that's how we can use trig to solve this problem. And again, the idea behind using trig is that you need a right triangle to do so. So in a lot of these problems, how you draw it will matter because you wanna try and finagle a right triangle out of it. All right, so that, um, that concludes this video on some trig and right triangles. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.